Hey there, all you spooky kids and crazy ghouls, and welcome to the Red River Horror Podcast. I am your host, Joe Zakreski. This is episode number 56. And before we get into it, or while you're listening, check out KeystoneRetro.com. Use promo code REDRIVER for 10% off your order at KeystoneRetro.com. Now sit back, relax, and let's drift down those channels of fear. <laughs> All right, and welcome to episode number 56 of the Red River Horror Podcast. Once again, I'm the host, Joe Zakreski, joined by RedRiverHorror.com founder, Eddie Cayazzo. Eddie, how are you today? Joe, I'm doing fantastic. Last week, I was hopped up on pumpkin spice coffee, but uh, yes. I've calmed down a little bit since then. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. and we have a guest with us today. I like to say we are blessed, but because it's a horror show, maybe we're cursed, but in a good way, <laughs> to have the ha-ha man, the guy who brings the ha-has on the mornings in Philadelphia from 93.3 WMMR's Preston Steve show, Steve Morrison. Steve, thank hey you so much for being with us. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. And, and and if you've already had an OD with the pumpkin spice, it's just the beginning of the season. You're you're, you're going to be in one Malibu rehab before you know it. So. <laughs> you're right. Probably. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But, Steve, thanks so much for joining us. You are a legend, uh, an idol, a, an amazing man in this town, Philadelphia. He, we just can't uh, thank you enough for. That's too kind, too kind. <laughs> you know, and, and, I, and, and, I, and I appreciate that. The, the truth of the matter is, is that, um, you know, uh, uh, we love where we are. We always, even now to this point, and people will say that and they'll be very kind. And, and, and like, even if we're, if I'm someplace and someone wants a picture, I'm, I'm always like, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but the thing is that, it, cause it, you know, with the show that we do and in the morning we're, we're hanging with people that we consider, you know, the entire listenership in a, in a car, you know, driving to work or now if they're, you know, work zooming from home or whatever um so it, it, it's a very um familial feeling so it, it never it never seems that way but you're very kind to say that and and, and uh hey we, we're, we're thrilled to have this here in philadelphia so so and great to meet you guys too because i uh, i checked out your site and everything and i'm you know we have a common bond mm -hmm, right horror yes <laughs> and that's what we're with so redriverhorror.com we're trying to get more content content up there as as always it's a struggle but we have some great great people contributing to the site and you know one of the things early on i i really wanted to base it in philadelphia and kind of make it like say hey there's a big horror contingent here and uh honestly it's no secret that you are a huge horror fan so that's why i love horror i i i there there is again i i use the pizza analogy even bad horror is good um <laughs> you know and 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 it's and it's that way and when you find those gems um you know it, ever since you know i was a kid my dad you know, kind of wean me on the original Universal horror movies, mm -hmm. you know, the lore and the legend, and I found it fast. He did something, though, that was I thought was cool and kind of set the deal. He uh, he always said, because he loved them, he would say, you know, if you were to come back a little bit from the screen that you're seeing, if you get too scared, remember there's a, a director there and, and a script writer, and then so, and then you can, you know, if that's too much, and then you, you can bring yourself back in. So I've never... You know, I love the exhilaration of, of, of a good horror movie, but I know people like uh, who are Casey on our show mm -hmm. or Preston has, has freely admitted. I tell him, he says, is that a horror movie I could watch? I said, no, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> he will he, he legitimately will freak, you know, and, and that's and that's the purpose of, of a good horror movie. Uh, you know, so he knows his limitations, but I've, I've always loved it. I assume you guys you know, if you're going to go and default to a movie uh, on a Saturday night or whatever, you're going to look for a horror movie. You know what's funny? It's I thought I knew a good deal about horror and meeting people in the horror space. I realized that I know like the top 40 horror, the stuff that that makes the big box screens. And when, when Joe and I started going to some festivals, mm -hmm. it's like, wow, there is so much great content out here. So I actually, I don't know if you know this, uh, Eddie, that, uh, um, I, um, years and years and years ago, um, my a friend who kind of helped get me into radio, I was doing stand-up comedy. Um, you know, I'd, I'd gone to school for multi, for media. I wanted to be in, in movies and do television and all that stuff. And then I was doing stand-up though. And he was working at a radio station, uh, WBAB on Long Island. And, um, um, 
you know, I went into, he had, can you come record some commercials for your appearance at this club? And I did. And I was like, wow, you know, this is, I can do everything. I can voice, I can write, I can do the whole thing and create these little skits. Uh, and, and so the, the radio career was off and running, but long story short, he was a massive horror fan as well. And we both started writing things and started kind of contributing things to Fangoria when we could. Or wow. uh, he was friends with Forrest J. Ackerman, who is a guy who edited and, and created the magazine Famous Monsters of Filmland years ago. So he also became friends with Tom Savini. Oh, and man. So in that remake of Night of the Living Dead <laughs> that Tom Savini directed, you know, because they let the, the rights to the original one lap. So you could go get a one dollar copy at a CVS of Night of the Living Dead. Um, uh, they did that, that remake, that color one. I'm one of three of the only flesh eating zombies in that remake of Night of the Living Dead. That's <laughs> wow. Whoa. What a nugget. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That is, and yeah. it, was, it was shot out in Western PA as yep. was the original. Yeah. Wow. Outside of Pittsburgh. Yeah. That's incredible. And you know, it's funny as I have this written down cause I was actually going to bring that movie up. Were because, you really? Well, because you know, Tom Savini is active when we do Tony. We do on Twitter hashtag Tony Todd Tuesday. Yes, who is the star yeah. of that remake? And, and Tony Todd was like the the nicest guy you knew. This yeah. guy, I mean, that was before Candyman. Yep. Um, you know, and 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 the Star Trek: The Next Generation. But he was yep. just the the coolest guy. And uh, he came in, and and, and uh, you know, we were like. You know, oh my God! <laughs> uh, because they were really starting to make some leaps and bounds ahead in the in the prosthetic makeup stuff. Um, so a lot of the groundwork that you saw, you know, now with what we perceive the uh, the, the 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 current state of uh, zombie makeup to look like, yeah, those yeah. guys were doing it. And and Sabini was directing. I, I think the movie is solid. My one issue with it is is that that was the seminal. Oh my God! I can't believe what I'm seeing. Movie when it came out. You know, it, it, it sent it sent people running for the exits. They they couldn't believe it. And this one was, I, I think, when it was released theatrically for the first time, they may have altered it. It was like PG. They 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 took out. There was a ton of of real graphic stuff that they took out. And I mean, the performances were good and everything. But I mean, you know, it's like <laughs> it's like my issue from uh, the original Evil Dead. And, which is a, a masterpiece. I love it. It really is. To Evil Dead 2, which is essentially a remake of Evil Dead. Mm -hmm. And there, you know, there are little things that trade out. I'm like, there is something to be said for that visceral, you know, slamming stuff. Agreed. I mean, so like, do you think when we're talking about like special effects, do you think that like, you know, modern special effects, like sometimes I feel they take away from the creepiness of old, you know, makeup artists from like stuff that like Tom Savini would do. And with like no, all the, these the, remakes coming out, you know, it's like, you know. Yeah, yeah. The practical effects are are awesome. And when you see things like what, what, um, oh God, I, um, I can't believe I forget. Rob Bottin mm -hmm. did in um, John Carpenter's The Thing, oh, which yep. yeah. you'll get CGI artists now who will say, who say, you know, F C A C G I. look at the, the chest open up. And, and, and I mean, you know, pneumatic pumps and, and things and uh, and that sequencing. I mean, and, and the thing is, is a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them are obviously the original, uh, but but that one, you know, as well. So I, uh, it's actually kind of what I the way I approach uh, sci science fiction as well. I, I always, to me, if you can blend CGI with practical mm -hmm. and get kind of the kind of both going on, it's pretty cool, you know. Uh, there's a show on that was on CBS that is on CBS um, Paramount Plus called Evil. And uh, oh, think of. Um, I loved that. Yeah, I actually did watch it. Right. So the X Files meets the Exorcism of Emily Rose meets Silence of the Lambs. Mm -hmm. And they have some practical effects costumes in that, like a real deal, old style mm -hmm. goat devil with huge hooves and the whole thing. And uh, I'm like, son of a bitch, that looks good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, It's going to be interesting because we were talking about this uh, the other week. And I was like, I know I saw you tweet about this one, which was Salem's Lot. And like some of like Absolutely. makeup and that always creeped me out. But that's getting well, a remake. And I'm like, you know, my, that might take away from it a little bit. Like it's actually that it's been remade already. That's they true. did it with, with Rob Lowe. Yeah. Uh, and that was good. Uh, Tobe Hooper, Toby Hooper, however mm. he, you know, sure. the, the pronunciation is always up in the air, but Toby Hooper yeah, right. directed it. 
that mini series is about four or four hours plus, yeah. you know, if you get the, 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 uh, the, the disc, um, just came roaring out of nowhere. And that the decision to go with that makeup for Mr. Barlow, the vampire, which mm-hmm. was a tribute to, uh, Max Shrek, not, you know, Nosferatu, Absolutely. That, the, the claws and the, the two fangs up front, which was so badass. Yeah. <laughs> to have James Mason as, as, uh, his, his, uh, his confidant, you know, his, his caretaker, all of that. I mean, there are classic scenes and when that first time when Danny Glick, the little boy, is hovering outside the window, scratching, mm-hmm. and they stay fastidiously with the lore that you have to be invited in. Um, you know, all those things were, were so cool. But I mean, you know, think about that <laughs> for television. It was a good mm-hmm. budget. But look what they did with not a lot. Yeah, you know. Actually, I I did have a question about. So you you obviously you were speaking about Salem's Lot. Are there right. are there any adaptations of Stephen King's work that have made it to the screen that you do not like? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, there, there's. Listen. There. There are. You know. Um, King is is an interesting back and forth with me because, like he he summarily dislikes the shining Mm -hmm. and and um and and i love the shining now i have stanley kubrick is one of my favorite directors of all time uh but but there king's inability sometimes and and look i'm hey let me fix your career stephen king (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, but his his inability i think with some endings setup is great um and, and sometimes it just doesn't it just doesn't jive, and, and I, um, uh, you know, there's the, there can be that. He, d- I mean, The Shining, and which was which was, the, I mean, the uh, Salem's Lot, which is a, a, a short story, I believe, in a larger collection, um, and um, you know, the, a lot of times you have like a director like David Cronenberg who did The Dead Zone. Yeah. St- Stephen King says The Dead Zone is a uh, Cronenberg script, but The Dead Zone is better than his book. And, and and the whole conceit of putting Christopher Walken in the scenes that he's flashing back to, where he can look around and see what's going on, you know, like King thought that was brilliant. So I think I think there's he is he is a great talent, but you know sometimes like I remember the original miniseries it when it yeah. ended and there was a, a spider the in spider. a cave. Oh a my gosh. Slingshot. You have got to be kidding me. Um, At least they kind of reconciled in the movie. In part two, they have Stephen King there and they give like hands on the book. He was like, oh, I didn't like the ending. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, but there's uh, like, again, Salem's Lot um, and a a lot of the stuff that he's been involved with. You know, he he was he was good friends with George Romero as well. And they they did Creep Show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and all of that stuff. So um I'm trying to think of this one that I that I absolutely revile that's a Stephen King yeah. a, a script. You know, even like I, I even dig Maximum Overdrive, which is a which is a <laughs> it's just a junk food movie that King himself directed, you know. Uh, it's not technically it's like maybe horror sci-fi. I guess it would fall under that. That gets a know. lot of love more recently. It's crazy. I and people hated that movie when it came out, and just like with with Halloween three. But for some reason, Maximum Overdrive keeps popping up. It's- well, you you not now you've raised another issue here. Uh huh. And I think that Halloween three is. A very solid horror movie. You have come to the right place, yes, sir, because we agree with you wholeheartedly. <laughs> right. That has been unfairly chastised yep. for not having Michael Myers in it. When the original plan was to have sort of an, a, um, a series year. that had the Halloween moniker that wasn't anchored to Michael Myers. Yep. I love Halloween 3. I love the whole Druid thing. Mm-hmm. I We play a clip from Halloween 3 every Halloween on our show. The whole, uh, when he explains to Tom Atkins, the warlock, mm-hmm. the history, you know, the Feast of Samhain. Yeah. And the hills ran blood with the red, 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 red with the blood of children. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's so well done. I mean, the, the movie, the whole conceit is... They're going to murder all the kids in the in the country. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. I mean, it's wild and it's great. 
and and uh, the music, you know, and, and uh, so so Tommy Lee um, Wallace Wallace, I guess is that it? Tommy, yeah, so, the well, director. Tom, he was the director. Yep, Alan right. Howarth did the music, right? The or music, John right? Lee. Very very Carpenter esque uh, in 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 the approach, and uh, the, that that whole thing is is overly maligned. I think just people default to it, and I always put it in my list of ones you must see. And and uh, they they had a they released a a newer version of it you know fairly a, a few years back on its anniversary and it's creative and it's it's wild and it's I love it especially the the family when they take the family out with mm-hmm. the uh, then they have them in the in the test room you know and everyone knows two more days to Halloween Halloween. <laughs> Silver Shamrock. It's great. Love yeah. it. The, the, I mean, the last scene, which is Tom Atkins, turn it off. Turn it off. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Stop, Stop it. That's it. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Turn it off. You know, the, but honestly, think about that. And I love it. I love the ending. It's very cool. But but the fact that you can call up a network and say, yeah, I'm, call, I'm calling from the gas station off of Route 66. Can you shut off your programming for tonight? Yeah. Will do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, when you put but, it what, that way. What's that? You say Druid uh, Halloween masks are causing children's heads to explode? Yeah, we better take it off. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. Like even uh, our one buddy who jumps on the show sometimes, he has a his own website that uh, I uh, KeystoneRetro dot com. He likes to sell like figures, and he has some. Yeah, I don't think his Halloween three figures that he has are up for sale on there. I think he's I'm keeping sure those as a collectible. Yeah. But you're you're a figures guy too, right? You, oh my god! Yeah, we well, can. Yeah. I, I, I can see some. Some. Yeah. Godzilla. Yeah, some of the back. Yeah. So, uh, I tend to do more on the line of, of uh, I'm also a, a Batman, I'm a big Batman fan and, and, and Marvel. And mm-hmm. I have my, you know, it's funny. And you talk about kind of your, your, um, your beginning stages of putting together your heart, your horror stuff and, and, and coming in with just your, your, you know, the, the, the movies, your 40 or 50 or so that you, sure. that you reference. But the truth of the matter is, is that that's, that's why this genre is so cool. I mean, whatever, you know, I think you'll find most horror people, and and if you go to a horror convention or, or I, I think actually a little bit more horror, you're always like, come on in, mm-hmm. yeah, let's let you know what what do you like, what what works for you. I mean, there are probably some things that people get persnickety about, but um, you know, like for example, look at us defending Halloween three season <laughs> of the Witch. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, um, yeah, the, the the bigger stuff is something that I. To me, it's like a tactile way to connect to something that you just loved. I um, years ago I went to a horror convention um, with uh, Dar- uh, um, Dario Argento was there. Oh my and god! I, I hung out with him. I hung out with Savini. Hung out with the uh, the famous uh, comic artist Gan Wilson. I don't know if you're familiar with that guy. Um, They're all but Italian. A whole bunch of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so. Um, but uh, Frank Fazetta. Do you remember the artist Frank Fazetta? Who did all those like the like the classic Conan the Barbarian holding the uh, you know the 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 sword down? He very wow like oil yeah. paintings, but all, all those guys you know and and uh, those conventions and I, I mean right from the get go like I wasn't you know I was just coming into the stuff and and uh, very welcoming and always very cool and and there's just there's just a good vibe so that's what I find so so wild across the boards and there's you know, my neighbor next door, my neighbors, uh, he can't stand horror, but his wife loves it, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so it, it's always a kind of thing like, Oh, you're into horror. Oh, cool. You know? And then I also, but I, and I, I'll be like, I have my opinions. I, I don't ever want to rob someone of their deal. I try to make my case. Like, for example, I love, I love the, the Friday, the 13th movies for their fun aspect, but I don't consider them horror as much as I consider them suspense. Okay. I consider them, you know, a, a, a sub slasher genre, you know, uh, that, that I think is, is, um, I mean, I, listen, I, I've got the whole series and, you know, and I own the, all, all the, all the movies and stuff like that. And they're fun and you put them on and they're junk food movies, mm-hmm. but would, would, would they be in the same park with the exorcist? No. You know, very interesting. I, so yeah. we we've had a debate on the show that's gone over a year now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and, and it's funny. My wife actually did mention that uh, I was I was so happy that you, that you said that with the Friday the Thirteenth and The Exorcist because I I think somebody called in at one point and said it's like oh The Exorcist isn't scary. 
but like Friday the 13th is, and you're like, well, your first mistake was thinking that like Friday the 13th is on the same level as The Exorcist. Mm. Like, so- however, like the first, and you guys will agree, the, I lo- the first Friday the 13th with the concept of having the actress Betsy Palmer who would tell you how to spice up your chicken cacciatore when unexpected guests drop by on (laughs) daytime talk shows and make her the lunatic mother of Jason Borges, you know, who's, who's, that's cool. And and, and, um, that's fun. Listen, I love a good, you know, uh, 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 kids are having too much sex. So we need to kill the moment in a, uh, in in a movie. What I used to always though, have an issue with, is you've got, you know, if it was Kane Hodder at all of like six feet four playing Jason, Mm -hmm. standing within, clearly the camera has become Jason's point of view at some point. And you're following this person and there's a thin branch with some leaves on it. And and how the fuck are you not seeing? (laughs) You know, I I mean, I'll play along, but come on, you know. (laughs) <laughs> you know, sus- uh, the suspension of reality. That that first Friday the Thirteenth, though, solid. Even the second when he, uh, you know, and then He's obviously with the uh, over his head. I mean, I love the iconic, yeah. go- you know, yes, exactly the, the 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 goalie mask and all that stuff. I would say in of the films, Halloween, the original, you know, is is a a, a juggernaut, a masterpiece. You know, that's I agree. That's a, mm-hmm. That is so well done, and 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 so brilliant. And you have that whole thing of Carpenter's, I mean, not Carpenter, uh, uh, yeah, John Carpenter, yeah. Uh, placing the um, the first times you see Michael Myers in his Halloween costume and at least six or seven more times, broad daylight, broad daylight, as, as Toby, Toby Hooper did with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Wait, we're not supposed to see him yet, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and and the, that that to me is such a cool thing. The, the the building the building of the legend and the lore when when a uh, Laurie Strode is sitting in the in in the class and they're they're if you hear what the teacher's talking about it's completely germane to the plot but she's looking out at the car passing by and um you know and Donald Pleasance oh, I mean that is just every bit of that when he explains and we play this again every, on our show every Halloween <laughs> they they brought to me this six year old child you know you know dark eyes lifeless eyes uh, the, the eyes of the devil. And I, I spent, you know, I, I love when they pull up in front of the, uh, the asylum and, and uh, the evil is gone from here. <laughs> the evil is gone. And he, and, he, and he keeps referring to Michael Myers as it. And the nurse calls him on it and says, it, could you, it's a human. And he, go, and he goes, if you say so, it's It's so, so goddamn good. It's so wonderful. Well, Steve, so you consider Friday the 13th, a suspense film. All right. I consider it, I consider so, it a suspense. I'll, I'll give it more of that than I, I, I and you can I would even go with you could say it's just a straight up slasher. I consider slasher a subgenre of horror. Well, then you're you're the perfect person to ask this question. Then, so over yeah. a year we've been doing this podcast, we have a little thing going on with Silence of the Lambs. Okay, right now we have. Uh, previous, you know, directors, actors, people that have have given their opinion on it. So, Joe, what, <laughs> we ask everybody this. I I don't think I've had anyone agree with me. It's like I just asked, like, is Silence I, is Silence of the Lambs a horror movie? So I, I could I could ask something that's tangential to that. Do you consider Psycho a horror movie? Mm. I personally do. Yes. Right. I think so Hitchcock you kind of have to because he's you know he's right. one of the. But I think it's also it's also a suspense. You could label it also as a suspense film. And yet, you know, people would say that Hitchcock's like Frenzy or Rear Window or Vertigo or all those movies are suspense films. Um, this is just more amped up by a, a cannibal, you know, a, a, a killer. Um, I think it falls in that umbrella, you know, as a horror movie. And I, I always immediately claim it's horror when any, when I can point out the fact that it's the only horror movie ever to take the top four Oscars, mm-hmm. you know, best actor, actress, uh, director, and and, uh, and and screenplay, and, and um, uh, which is very cool. I mean, you know, what what a what a what a perfect movie. One or two things in it that that um, that I have an issue with, but it, you know, that's like that's it's so minute. I wouldn't, you know, it's it's not even going to, but you know, there, there are very. Do you hear the goats screaming? 
It's, it's not that. Yes, I love all that. But <laughs> I, what I, what I, what I, what I found, like when he has the the uh, when uh, um, uh, Lecter has the skin, the guy who he kills, mm. and then takes his skin, it, the body size difference between the two of them, you know, <laughs> it, uh, it's no one says, hey. You know, with the he's got a, a flesh mask on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but you need that, you know, to, to make the, to move the plot along. But then, and then later on, you know, twenty minutes later, you're you're in the um, with the infrared goggles and that incredible scene at the end with the in the house, and it's you know all is forgiven. So, well, so is it a horror film or not? Yes or no? I'm gonna, you know what? Because I like to to uh, boast about it being the only horror movie in the Oscar category. <laughs> I will give it hard. He's keeping it there. <laughs> though, though I rarely, I'll tell you this, I never include it in my horror movie list. I'll, I'll put out one every year for people to yeah. watch for Halloween. Right. So that's, I, that, I that's never include it. it. So, so that's where I go with yeah. it. It's like, I, like we do, we're doing like, you know, 31 horror movies for, Oct, you know, for 31 October. days of Halloween. Yeah. 31 days of Halloween. It's like, I would right, include right. Silence of the Lambs in that. Right. It's great. It's a, it's a masterpiece. Yeah. Um, uh, the Exorcist, which is to me is is William Freakin's every level of of sort of verite. There are points where you're watching it where the performances are so good and the natural lighting is so brilliant and, and that you almost feel like you're you're actually watching reality. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you also have a demonic Pazuzu demon, which makes it horror. Mm -hmm. It's not simply a police procedural. It's, yeah, right. it's hard. There's more right. to it. Yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's another one that's going to be getting a remake. I think they're going a full trilogy. Oh yeah. Well, Ellen like, Burstyn's I think in it. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll, I'll I'll check it out. Yeah. Now you know what though. I mean, dangerous again, territory. My I have fond memories of the of the Exorcist because first off, the book by William Freakin was such. I mean, people can't oh, remember yeah. how how explosive that book was and how pe my father read it and and refused to go take me to the movies because I was, I was a kid <laughs> and, you know they, they they would indulge me on these things because I was such a movie fan and my mother one of my favorite memories of, of my mother she passed away when I was 20 21 but she took me to see the exorcist <laughs> on, on an afternoon screening uh, and, uh, uh, I mean, it was like, oh my God. Now people say some people today might have to be sort of, um, given a, a, a tutorial in context and where it was and how it came and, and how so many have borrowed from it to appreciate just how good it is. But, um, you know, the, it, it is one of those, the performances and, and, and again, um, there's, you know, this scene where, uh, Karis and Damien are, 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 are talking and he says, I, I want to give you some background on, on, uh, on the, on the, the, the demons. And Karis goes, there's only one. Mm -hmm. He knows he's been there. He's, yeah. he has faced this demon in Iraq. He's faced it. He knows, he knows what he's dealing with. And that is so, that is so effing cool. <laughs> you know, I mean, it is, it's just, you know, uh, um, Everything about it. I mean, and, and you know, it, it holds up. The I don't even say this. They have the direct, the extended director's cut. Yes. And I usually love, I love the additionals, but the movie version that made it to its first theatrical release is the quintessential version. Mm -hmm. you, you don't get her doing the backward spider thing down the steps, but you you don't need it. It's so brilliantly directed. It, it, I, I would tell people see the theatrical version first and then see that additional because it is it is um, it's great to see these additional things. But the the, the cuts, the editing, everything the is exactly what. It, yeah. And he also in horror history, I think maybe you guys will agree with this. You have perhaps the greatest horror movie of all time and its sequel is perhaps the worst horror movie of all time. <laughs> it's such a waste of James Earl Jones. And, th and that was when we finally rented that because we were really excited. You know, once once you actually get to travel 
on your own, you know, like yeah. Joe, Joe was first to get his license. So it's like, yeah. all right, well, let's go. So we just literally, there was what on that strip. Uh, so obviously used to be West coast video that's closed in Andorra shopping. Right, 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 yeah, yeah. Then you have blockbuster. So I think that was a blockbuster one. Yeah. Blockbuster was an Ivy Ridge. Yeah. And then the Hollywood, Hollywood video. Del- so further down the ridge. Yeah. So we finally rented the heretic exorcist two. We're so excited. We popped that. I could have warned you. <laughs> I saw that piece of shit in the theaters oh. and I never talk in the Ooh. theaters and I had to, I had to, yeah. it's so bad. That's the and one. And you know, the director is a genius. John Borman. He directed deliverance. Yeah. A masterpiece. Ooh. It's like, and Borman tells the story. I didn't mean to cut you off anybody. No. He was flying back from England. I got word somehow. You know, they stopped. There was either a stopover or whatever. And the reviews started to come out over The Heretic. And <laughs> they were universally paying. Now, I own a copy of it because it's one of them. It, it's a horrific blast. It's so, there's so much bad stuff. They make up shit in that movie where they can actually sync up. They wear these headsets. Yep. Excuse me. These headsets where they can suddenly. I didn't know telepathic equipment existed. And all it really is is a couple of push pins and a headband. Yeah. Um, oh my God. And and, and, and uh, it was just, it was just horrible. And though, uh-huh. let me see if you guys agree. Yep. Exorcist three. <laughs> we were just about to say this. Thunders. It's great. Yes. Uh, and that is, that is, um, that has one of the most startling, visceral, brutal murders. Yeah. In the movie, I show that scene in the hallway, you know, where it's quiet, and and, um, and the whole concept of like Brad Dourif and, and the uh, uh, and and Blatty, William Peter Blatty directed that version. He mm-hmm. directed that. Yes, it was, yeah, it was great. Hey, if you weren't going to yeah. say it, we were because yeah. we're like, <laughs> so that was that was one that scared the crap out of me. I I was terrified of the That's, Exorcist three. So you guys will know this, that scene where they're in the the uh, the, the nursing home, the hospital, mm-hmm. and the old woman is crawling on the ceiling. ceiling. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. I got yeah. goosebumps. Think, oh Me my too. God. It, it, yeah, it's great. It's great. And so that's why hope always springs eternal for the horror fan, you know? So, yeah. okay, maybe they'll do it right. Maybe they were so inspired by that, you know, that they they adhered to it. Yeah. Listen. I, I uh, the exorcism of Emily Rose I just watched again, which I think is a great horror movie, great courtroom, mm-hmm. great progression, great moments, uh, everything rings solid and true on that, um, and it, it it doesn't it doesn't prejudge mm-hmm. um, you know uh, religious philosophies and it doesn't it, it's just it's just great and, and um, there are moments in that you can that's the thing about horror it's like. You can take it and we're going to turn it a little bit this way. And we found something completely new. We're going to use a conceit. Hey, running zombies 28 days later. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, rage, rage virus as opposed to, you know, whatever. Okay, we're going to just turn it a little bit and you can get a gem, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, did you read that book by any chance, Legion? Yes, it's it's great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, you know, and that's that's what the 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 the, the um when when they're playing back the audio, where you know when he's listening to the audio, of Reagan, she, she declares that she's Legion. You know that she that which which is which is so. so For we cool. are many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was like, oh. as you can see, I love her. <laughs> 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 and when they done, so you know, listen, I I called up a list of some that I, I just posted a, a while. I have it up on my screen here, just ones that I think are gems that if you want, if you want me to mention a few, I will, if it might, you know, um, let's you know, do it people- because honestly yeah. it's again, I really thought that my horror ran deep and mm. I have come to find through the site, especially that yeah. I know nothing. So I would absolutely <laughs> love to hear it. So let me recommend some movies that, and maybe you haven't seen them or maybe you have, have you seen train to Busan? No, I have not. Train to Busan is a Hong Kong movie, uh, um, uh, South Korean, I should say. Mm-hmm. It is a super solid zombie movie. Uh, I, I mean, uh, aggressive, running, um, involves a train trip. Train to Busan, and, and the sequel, however, stinks. 
But the first one, Train to Busan, is good. You guys have seen Sinister, right? With oh, Ethan hell yeah. yeah. Yep. That movie, again, Love another it. one where they come out of the blue. He's kind of like a Stephen King author, mm-hmm. Ethan Hawke. And, and I love, listen, I love the visceral, oh, my God, evil dead, they're coming through the windows. But I also love the, the slow, like, like with the excess turn, mm-hmm. what's going on, you know, all, all of these things that are starting to piece together. That movie, to me, just kicks Man. ass. It's that, that's so my favorite. immersive when, like, he's got the eight millimeter going. It's just yeah. you hear the clicking of the reel and, like. You know, and, you feel like you're in the room. Track. Like, yeah. The music. The room, 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 yeah. Room. And these kids and, and what he's watching and and, uh, uh, and what you realize is happening to him. Uh, I, I assume you guys are fans of at least the first two Conjuring movies, correct? The first two, yes. Yep. Because yeah. uh, we were thinking when you mentioned Exorcism of Heavenly Rose, that's like what we were hoping to get out of the most recent one, but it, it kind of missed the mark. So, so on the no. site. It yeah. was we were we were really this courtroom drama type thing we were really expecting, and both Joe and I, if we were to review the film on Red River Horror, we do boats zero out of five. We both gave it a two out of five. Yeah, and I'm, I was sad because they they started to do now. Nah, now I get it. Yeah, you know the the inclination is you 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 kind of you took a similar story, The Conjuring Two, which was super solid mm-hmm. and had those metered moments that just started to build on. But, um, uh, you know, it, I think by its very nature, the inclination amongst everyone is to, bah, 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 we need, we need more. more. We need, you know, we yeah. need more. And you don't always, uh, and I'll tell you uh, uh, another movie on this list that I put up. So obviously in the original conjuring, you had the introduction of Annabelle, the doll, yep. and then they started the Annabelle series, <laughs> um, with, with, with mild to, to decent results, but Annabelle comes home is i don't know if you guys have seen that that is they they take the conceit that they go to the warren's house there's a babysitter watching you know the, their daughter and that room houses all that stuff and because a, a girl believes one of the friends believes that through that room she could perhaps get in touch with her dad who died she unlocks it and everything's happening in this house it's a confined thing but you know what? It is it is really good. And there are a whole bunch of other potential franchise creatures and ghosts that are introduced in it that are actually really cool. And that that's one that was brought back from the precipice and they did a good job. You know, if, if you just if you just kind of look for that 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 one shoot to go down that's gonna make it different, and they did with that one. So Huh? Okay. Mine was creation. Annabelle creation actually scared me. It's yeah. actually that with with the girls in the house. Yes. Yeah. That the girl. In the, yeah. Yep. Well done. Well done. And I love when they take things as benign as the top of a hallway, the, the landing at the top of a staircase, and a a little dark turn down. You know, and the, the camera keeps looking at it, You're like what it what is it? What you know? What what the hell's going on? And and it's not cheap. They're just building. You know, to, to take things that you see in your in your everyday or things that wow, I guess I have to think differently about this, you know. Um, and that's what I love. And that's why I love the the next film on my list, which is It Follows. Yep. Oh, man. Have One of my favorites of all time. We actually interviewed um, Olivia Lucardi from, she was. Yeah. She, she's in the movie, yeah. She explained what that clam thing was. Fine, but go yes. ahead, sorry. It yeah, no, it's so, it's so good. It's, and I, and, I, and I explain it to people and I say, you're not going to, appreciated from the description but there is something that wants to kill you that is walking towards you all the time and it can look like somebody you know and it can look like somebody you don't know and your only way to stop it from killing you is to do something as monstrous as probably the capability of the thing coming at you and so you, the fact that they sort of finessed in this conceit yeah with how how it works and how it goes backwards if you fail to be a monster yourself is just is just great yeah you now know? what would your strategy I mean, be if you had it following you yeah i mean you know would you i'll tell you what do, no, that's the question it asks and no one everyone blurts out an answer and then they go well wait a second you know <laughs> I try and go prostitute and hopefully she's very busy that night and it just gets spread right, right build enough right. separation how about for- a pro- See the, a prostitute with with um, 
a prostitute with cancer, right? So that you got her. Like, oh. Yeah. Uh, hey. <laughs> it's a tough song. But the fact that it makes you think about those dumb things <laughs> yeah. and this conceit, when she sees it and when you see, again, think about it. It, it. it introduces that notion that she's sitting on a blanket with her friends and looking across a, 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 a field and everyone's playing Frisbees, for, you know, and whatever, hacky sack. And there's one woman who seems to be determined walking across towards them, not running. And she keeps looking and she keeps looking and, oh, my God, what is this, you know? Um, how do you, how do you ever sleep? How do you ever, you know, to know that it's, it, it will never stop, you know, it was great. Um, I, I don't want to dominate your, your, this is your thing, but I, I figured I might throw a few at you if you're interested. No, this I, is I, we would have asked anyway. Yeah, we were going to ask. <laughs> this is one that is, I, I first saw on Shudder and it, it popped up and, and, uh, it's out of Buenos Aires and, you know, like, uh, record, you know, it, it, one of these gems that was made into quarantine, um, oh, uh, wreck? Remated, which is wreck. Yeah, I haven't I, seen it. I have not seen it. It's so good. But this movie is called Terrified. So Terrified, it, I, I, I tell you, man, this, okay, suburban setting, house is side by side. This guy comes home. His wife is just on edge. And she, and she says she keeps hearing voices coming out of the sink in the kitchen and in the bathroom. She keeps hearing voices. And he's like, you know, he's like, he's trying to be supportive. He doesn't know what to do. And, and he goes, can we, can we sleep on it? They go to sleep. He's woken up by the sound of thudding. And he's like, what's going on? He goes into the bathroom and his wife is levitated, being smashed from wall to wall, oh back and forth. He goes, he gets arrested for her murder. Goes to the, he's in the police, the interrogation room. And, and the people are sitting there and you expect them to go, okay, you liar. And he starts to say what happened. And the cops go, we believe you. We have, and you're off and running. You're off and running. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ter terrified or terif terrified? Terrified. Yeah. Terrified. Yeah. All yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I see what I did this year is I tried to make a list of things that I think like people had, you can go down the list of the ones, you know, like we, mm -hmm. we mentioned a whole bunch. Absolutely. Of them, you know, yes. Great ones. But those ones that even, so there are ones that are even, you know, if you want to go real crazy to sub tier to, to like German, to, to, to Japanese, you know, I mean, or the stuff that gets really crazy. Uh, but but these are ones that are just off a little bit off the beaten path. Have you guys ever seen uh, Let the Right One Let the Right One In? Oh, yeah, I have. OK, <laughs> all right. It was remade as uh, Let Me In mm -hmm. by Matt Reeves, who directed Cloverfield, and he did a great job with it. But the original Swedish version, again, it takes the vampire myth and and puts it in in the coolest there's a little girl 9 10 11 maybe mm -hmm. who's 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 a vampire and this boy in this little complex in Sweden that they live in he really you know he he befriends her she has a this, there's so many levels to this that are so cool like there there's a caretaker for this girl but you realize as a vampire, she doesn't age. She might have met this guy who's an old man when he was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And and, and um, the story and, you know, that old thing about what happens to a vampire if they're not invited in and they come into a house? They they show that. Oh. Uh, and it's, and it's it, it does, but it's also, you know what it is? It's also a sweet love story with, uh, but with, with inevitable... Yeah. It can only go bad, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's it is badass. And you know what I'm talking about. There's a scene at the end in the pool, in a in a, in a public pool, and all hell is breaking loose, but you're only seeing what's falling into the pool because one of the boys is being held underwater. Mm. The boy, the, you know, the, the hero is quote unquote of the story. And it, it is un effing real. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's that to me is is one of the one of the one of the most inventive vampire movies I've seen in 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 years. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you like the vampires? I mean, it, you know it's funny like it's got me thinking cuz like uh, I'm going to do a full episode on it soon, but the third season comes out. You know, do you do the do you enjoy horror comedies as well? 
I do. I, I do. Um, um, are, are you talking about uh, what we do in the dark? What we do in the shadows? Because I was just in thinking shadows, about yeah. like how they address the vampire myth of being allowed in. I think they're going into one of them gets captured while he's a bat and he's at the SPCA <laughs> right, right. and they're yeah. just standing at the door and they're like, what are you doing? And they're like, well, can right. we come in? And they're like, yeah, come on in. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I, I mean, I, the, to me, there is a, a fine line though. Yeah. Um, like the evil dead morphed into, um, you know, the uh, Bruce Campbell's, you know, the, uh, Ar- 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 um, you know, uh, army of darkness, mm-hmm. which is, there's a, there's a fair amount of comedy. And in the series, there's a fair amount of comedy. Uh, and, and it's, it's really, you know, there's a lot of visceral stuff. There's a lot of gore. I, I would say it's, it's neutered often by the comedy, but that's yeah. okay. If you do it, if you do it vigorously and stick to it, but once you go there, the likelihood of you bringing an audience back to legitimate scared or legitimate terrified, I think become, you've cashed it in, yeah, you know? Yeah. But that doesn't, if, if you play in that realm and you do it and you make it cool, um, that's fine. You know, like there's a case to be made that, that uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, that you know, the which, which I... I really enjoyed the show. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Loved the video game too that they released after it came out. But the um, um, that walked that line, you know, of, of hip, hip, you know, kid teenager comedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, it had merit. It had weight to it. You know, it's a tough thing. I can't stand when they hey, but we're going to make it funny too. You know what? No, because yeah. unless only it, it's 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 the rare balance and it's hard to achieve do you agree with what i'm saying or yeah if if you're gonna do it you got to do it right where it's like buffy's a good example for like how the the tv show versus the movie that came out like because the movie that came up for like does a little too much valley girl but it kind of it kind of works you know it's nothing to be like oh but do you know you get a, a good comparison um uh fright night fright night that's per- okay, perfect yes, example. Yes. The original Fright Night mm-hmm. uh, and then the remake, which is actually very good. It was. It yeah. actually was good. But the remake is is much is is less on the yucks mm-hmm. and and more on the on the real on the real impact of stuff. But the original Fright Night, Roddy McDowell, the whole thing, they played the cool horror, um, the fun, and it was there was some wild, you know, prosthetics and effects and that stuff, and it was great. I mean, give me that. Just stay in that, stay in your lane when you do that, you know, because it's once you go, once you go comedy, mm-hmm. it's going to be hard to scare, you know, yeah. you got to pick a lane. You go in Shaun of the Dead zombie land or you go it, you know, which way do you want to go? Like, yeah, no, I love uh, we've had those guys on, on the show a number of times. I love them all. I, I, you know, and they're, they're incredibly talented. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, my and Shaun of the Dead is great. My one issue with Shaun of the Dead is it's operating at that 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 comedic level, and then it gets to the part in the pub where it actually becomes, oh, like his mother is now, you know, like yep. um, yep. and and so it goes. Are we now a legitimate zombie movie? And and, 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 then, <laughs> and then it goes. Then they're playing, you know, PlayStation in the shed again with zombie, uh, you know, uh, um. <laughs> If anyone could pull it off, you know, Edgar Wright and those guys, you yeah. know, could could do it. But but uh it, it to me that's that thing and it's you you it's hard to define it, but you know it when it's not quite what it should be. And you know, I'll take um, you know, Bruce Campbell with his uh, boomstick and all that stuff and then I'll have a good time, but I would never I would never consider Army of Darkness a straight up horror movie, right. you know. Yeah, there, there's interest. Like it's, I always found it more funny because, like, I love, yeah. I love the, you know, first Evil Dead, the original one. It's always has a special place in my heart. Um, yeah. Uh, where was I going with that? I was going with words. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I tend to blather on, so I'm probably throwing you off. It's yeah. all good, <laughs> but it's like yeah. you know when you see stuff funny, it's interesting when there's like that kind of genre bending, which like sci-fi does that a lot. Where sci-fi, it's not necessarily hard, but it just gets really scary, like an Event Horizon. Or well, like, you know, Event Horizon is on my list. It, it, it's 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 one of those movies that is um, it. They do it. They got it. Mm-hmm. They pulled it off. Absolutely. So you have, um, you know, this ship that in all for all intents and purposes 
went to the celestial version of hell and 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 and, and came back <laughs> and the ship design and again you're dealing there with computer and practical effects and that ship is so awesome looking yeah and and the 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 large sphere and uh all of the things that it that it does and it's it's bloody like nobody's business but it is i tell people you know i i because i'm a complete horror nerd i have my event horizon shirts that i'll wear um nice. you know and people say you know what what is that <laughs> um but and, I, and it holds up every bit it holds mm-hmm. up tremendously it's great solid movie what are, what are some other movies on that list so i had a, a event horizon you know it's a well the descent you guys have seen the descent right it's been a long time but i remember getting pretty creeped out by it so here's the story of you know of, of women spelunkers mm-hmm. the movie could work as a claustrophobic study mm-hmm. you know brilliantly done they're climbing they they haven't alerted anyone or one of the, per, the, the one of the women who was supposed to alert somebody on the outside to where they're you know going to be spelunking uh d- has not done that and they find themselves trapped in a series of caves and they don't know where the hell they are and that alone i mean if you're even remotely claustrophobic that'll scare the shit mm-hmm. out of you but then when that one lamp on the one girl's hat ducks up for a bit and you see something down the cave running or running across the scene. Oh my God, what is this? And that that story is actually based on, at least partly, there was a, a, a family in Scotland that was, I think this is in the 16th century. And the family was, the guy's name was Sawney Bean, a, a complete bunch of, of sort of inbred incest, multi, you know, generations of a family that lived in a cave and a cave system and had reverted to cannibalism mm-hmm. and it became such a thing as the legend goes and the lore goes the king himself mounted a uh a, a, a mission to go get this family and and kill him and and get him get him out so this this whole thing is so it's wild it's it's wild yeah. uh and, and so the, the descent is definitely one i also put up there midsummer mm-hmm. yep yeah i was i was gonna ask you about ari aster actually in general in general I, my thoughts, I don't know anybody that's currently, well, maybe, maybe Jordan Peele to an extent, but Ari Aster has released two films that just scared the crap out of me. Yeah, s- solid. I think what happens is, is that you, I always try to kind of meter people's you got to come in the right way to them, you know, mm-hmm. like Midsommar would make a lot of people um, uh, would make a lot of people. I, I think duck out after a while, like what's going on here. Yeah. So I, I if, if I sense they're going, when they get to that first cliffside scene, then you know what's going on, you know, but, but I mean um, that sense of dread that, we went to this wonderful place and, oh, man, we made a horrible mistake. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, and with this, uh, the other film, which I'm uh, uh, the. the um, oh, I'm sorry. Hereditary. Hereditary. I like Midsummer more. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hereditary is really good as well. But, um, you know, it is it's just um, uh, again, it's one of those ones that kind of lives with you for a while after you see it. Mm-hmm. And then I, I put on the list because I put this up around Halloween. Uh, and I think it's just a one. If you want to talk about the blending of if humor and um, fun and and how you can take heart and have fun with it is trick or treat. Oh, absolutely, trick or treat. Yeah. There's there's a guy who comes on in October. He doesn't like to <laughs> share his real name. Yeah. He goes by Doctor Halloween. Always trick or treats his number one horror movie. Right? I mean, well, not number one horror movie, but it's like Halloween. He watches it on Halloween. He watches specifically it on yeah. Halloween. I do- to me, that's that's a Christmas story. I watch it every yeah. Halloween. I I do a, a, a weeks leading up to Halloween, and and that has all of hell for Christ's sake. I even I enjoyed Hubie Halloween on Netflix, and it's yeah. it's it's not really that good. But I love the you know the the the, the, the jack o' lanterns and the and the whole thing and all that that mythos and all that stuff is great. So um, you know, trick or treat is a solid one. So, but that, that's pretty much the list that I had. And it's, um, 
you know, of, of just movies that I think are out there ready to be um, discovered, you know, by people. Oh, and there's another one that, that was very much H.P. Lovecraft uh, called uh, The Void. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. I have that. not seen that. No, I've had that actually. I have it like written down. <laughs> of like I things I need it. to watch. I still haven't gotten to it. And you know, those sort of Cthulhu type creatures. Yeah. And and moody and well done on a shoestring budget. And they make a lot of now. I can tell you too, if you've never seen, we're talking about vampires. To me, one of the great seminal vampire movies of all time, <clears throat> excuse me, the original Night Stalker, the original movie, the made for TV you know, a Tuesday movie of the week, yeah. uh, Darren McGavin, Las Vegas, Vampire. It, what they do with dialogue, Richard Matheson wrote the screenplay and he's he wrote, you know, just great stuff. I Am Legend, he wrote the original, mm -hmm. okay. you know, which is, actually, which is actually a vampire story. It's actually, they become basically vampires. Um, but the uh, uh, that movie, the way it's done, the the reporter, you know, starts Kolchak starts the tape recorder. He says, You're never gonna hear about this story in your local papers. They've expunged it, they made sure you'll never know about it. But here's what happened. And a, a, a vampire in Las Vegas, a town that's 24-7, 365 days a year, is perfect. Mm -hmm. And when they um the movie starts with Larry Linville from MASH as the coroner, they're all looking over the table and they're obviously vivisecting the body. And you don't see the body, but he's, he he looks over. He's like, "That's odd," you know. There's there, you know. There's there's no there's no blood. There's no you know. And 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 the ball starts rolling. And <laughs> and when they get a saliva egg sample, and they find out that the guy you know is is ninety three years old, and they go they go through his history of of. You know, you know, you realize that wherever there was a war around the, the world, he was there. He would show up. He had homes that had commercial uh, baths installed and all, you know, that that subtext, those little points that make you go, holy shit. That guy. You know, and they're, they're trying to say, is this a real vampire? And Kolchak's point, the reporter says, it doesn't matter if he is or isn't. He believes he is. And that's what makes it so cool. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, that's, that's cool. All right, so I famously think that one film is overrated, okay? All right. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. For me, it's... Uh, and the funny thing is, there's so many horror creators that that is their inspiration. They love right. it. It's like the pinnacle of you know their, their horror experience. So I got to ask, is there a film, a horror film, that you think, that everybody loves, that you think yeah. is overrated? Poltergeist. Oh, I do too. Oh my, I am the same thing. I, I, I think Poltergeist was 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 for the masses. It has a lot of Spielberg in it. Mm -hmm. They really swing for the fences. I get it. Uh, um, you know, as as a at that time a seasoned horror fan, I saw nothing in it that didn't I hadn't seen. You know, and there's a lot of it where you're saying again, I want to play in your in your field. I want to you know. Okay, I'm 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 in. I'm I'm buying it. Just work with me. Mm. Work with me enough, you know, to make this happen. Oh, I'm hearing uh, cicadas. Yeah. Oh. Um. So so um. Ultimately, um, there's so much in that movie where I'm like, you gotta get, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, there's there's like no neighbor. <laughs> the the tree is reaching into the house, tearing the kid. No neighbor lifts up a window. Can you keep it down over there? You know, um, keep your tree this, outside. What are you doing over there? <laughs> all of this crap going on, and um, uh, you know, there's 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 just a lot of, you know, like with with the uh, uh, what's your name, the uh, the uh, Zoltan or Zoe, whatever her name is the yeah. the the, uh, the the poltergeist hunter who comes in and get me the tennis balls, and mm. you've done this. This is, yeah. <laughs> you know. This is something you do a lot. How come we don't know about this? You know, and so um, again, Toby Hooper supposedly directed a portion of it, but Spielberg was a big influence and wanted to really make it a a family horror movie. Yeah. You know, yeah. a family yeah. goes, and so they're they're good. But I mean, when you open up the door and everything's spinning and the record player, you know, the compass is playing the record and. 
uh, wow, you know, I, you'd think there'd be more of a, of a, you know, it's, 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 it's excessive. You know what? I'll tell you another one that is pure shit. The <laughs> remake, the remake of The Haunting. You have <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the original The Haunting directed by Robert Weiss is a masterpiece. It is a study. You never see a ghost at all. It's all done through sounds and, and angles and, and the script. And then everything that movie does right, the, the remake does wrong. Yeah. Excessive special effects, excessive shit. And it's just, it totally kills the horror. Yeah. And what they achieved with nothing, that movie spent millions of dollars to just completely suck. Yeah. yeah. And it came out the same time as like they tried doing that and the House on Haunted Hill remake came That's out. They right. both came out around the same time, which is not a bad remake, but missing Vincent it is Price not. was always kind of like, yeah. Vincent Price, you can't beat Vincent Price. But they actually did an okay job. Yeah. With with that with that remake. I don't you, you listen, I'll again, I'll give you a lot of points. For, I'll give that one points for effort. I and the thing is I saw that one. I have an emotional attachment to the House on Haunted Hill. Because my dad actually took me to see it at AMC mm, yeah. Andorra, so it's like, even even if that movie sucks, I, I still love it just because it actually memories. it actually yeah. does it. It actually has some good moments in it. Well, and, and I think some 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 uh, some solid imagery, and um, you know, uh, I, that that one I'll watch. Oh, who gets Owen Gold. Wilson? Is Owen Wilson in, in The Haunting or House on Haunted Hill? I think he's, he's in The Haunting. He's, he's, he's in, in the, the remake ha- of The Haunting. The Haunting, that's right. Yeah, I was like, which um, the, the remake of uh, 13 Ghosts is is actually really good. The first one is was done in, um, uh, had these special ghost glasses. You know, William Castle, the producer. Mm-hmm. And you would see, if you put them on, you'd see the ghost on the screen and all that stuff. But the remake created some pretty badass you know the, the the one ghost with the with the head in the cage and all of that stuff. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it's been a while. Yeah, it's a, with Shannon Elizabeth, right? Again, and she's come. Yeah, even if they're not all that good, they're I, they're still fun. Just give me give me enough, you know, to go with. And, sure. and uh, yeah, but Poltergeist to me was one that I I don't when it's on I don't watch it. I don't you know it, it's okay. And then the second one is is even worse. And the third one which has all practical effects in that apartment building is, is unrelentingly horrible. Uh, yeah. So that, that franchise, I'm, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> yeah. Well, you leave that one alone, <laughs> but, uh, you know, because like we're talking movie and stuff. One of the other things we like talking about on the podcast, like, you know, we're talking about like polar ice or like hauntings. We do like some episodes, we'll do episodes where we talk about like real life, like ghost stories. Now, right. I was wondering if you had any favorite ones from like the Philadelphia area or any like legends from like where you grew up. We, or- actually, we actually did. We used to do it all the time. This is before a lot of the, you know, the, the, the plethora of, uh, of uh, reality ghost shows, which I watch all the time. I, I dig them, you know, and the more absurd, the, uh, the one on the travel channel with Zach Baggins is, um, is, is so horrible. <laughs> but I love it. Cause it's like, dude, if you're seeing ghosts at the Wawa on the way to the haunted, uh, house, you, you know, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're working too hard to sell it. But before all of that, we actually did uh, on the show, we'd actually go stay over, you know, um, Fort Mifflin, Eastern yeah. State Penitentiary. We got inside a whole bunch of places. Um, the um, <clears throat> it's over. It's it's over here. It's, it's near. um I don't know exactly where it is. Um, uh, off of Germantown, there's a house. Uh, maybe it's the Bolton House. Oh my gosh! It has Battle Ro- Battle Ro- Mansion. Battle Ro- Mansion. Right, right, right. I know the yeah. owner of that house. There you go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's that's one that's cool. Fort Mip. So we actually went, and there were. I'll tell you one thing that I, from my my personal thing, which is pretty cool. We'd go before everyone knew the EVPs and all this stuff, where you know we'd everyone would go out and. You know, and now you know you're 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 a plumber and you're a ghost hunter. No one ever. Yeah, yeah I'm a ghost hunter. Okay, you you actually went and studied parapsychology. No, no, no. I, I'm you know I work for Roto Rooter, but I bought this equipment. <laughs> yeah. um, but we were in Eastern State Penitentiary, and we stayed over. You know, and and everyone else saw something. I, I never saw anything, but I did hear something that was pretty wild. 
the 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 guy conduct we were up in what they didn't actually ever have a death row but they had a waiting area for people who would be transferred to death row in another prison right and so we were up there and the EBP you know you ask questions and um say you ask 10 or 12 questions if it senses audio it'll start recording if not on playback you'll get rapid fire question 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 uh, you know, and, and it, that's how that's how it records the second it picks up audio. So uh, the guy Lou Giroux is, was the guy who was with the Philadelphia Ghost Hunters or whatever at the time, and he was really good, good guy, and was kind of you know he, he'd go okay car outside, you know, so that he could sort of catalog false sounds. He was really trying to be thorough. And at one point, um, he says, "Do you want us here?" Now, we were all in the room, Preston, myself, you know, five or six people. Um, I I would have clearly heard this, but on playback, you hear no. And you hear no with, like, plate reverb, the, the, the room, you know. <laughs> I heard it. The audio file exists, clear, no. And um, that was pretty wild. That was the closest... Uh, you know, the, the, the closest that, that I came, I, I I go to the room right after everybody saw something. So I didn't see shit, but, but, the, um, <laughs> but it, you know, to me, it's always, it's always kind of cool, you know, that, that the possibility of, so, um, and, and in the general, Fort Mifflin is very haunted, I supposedly. Fort Mifflin. Um, yeah. And again, Eastern state to, to sleep over, we slept over in the, in the, in the main concourse that the, you know, we looked down all the, uh, I mean, and they were, they were, I mean, we were the only ones in there. You know, we, they, they locked us in with five or six listeners and we spent the night. It was pretty wild. <laughs> you know, so uh, there's a, there's a, you know, Gettysburg is full of Triangle Hill, you know, the, uh, mm-hmm. sure. all that stuff. So um, it, it, it has a rich history. So for ghost hunters, this area is, is kind of a hotbed. Yeah, we got some good stuff. It's a shame we never got into. I always wanted to do uh, the General Lafayette, which is on Germantown, which I think is now yes. called, now it's just closed, like an empty building. But right, that has right, right. Tons of stories of somebody like you know, the keeper is upstairs and she gets mad when people stay there too long. You know, uh, um, uh, the uh, yeah, yeah, the uh, I mean, the the list is that the guys who did the book of uh, weird, weird New Jersey, or um, uh, you know, uh, I even love the legend of the uh, the Jersey Devil and all of that, all that stuff and is all is all cool. And when you um, you know, uh, well, hey, speaking of that, the Blair Witch. Yeah. Um, a project, you know, the original Blair Witch was 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 a solid uh, movie playing on that old, uh, you know, the woods becoming something daunting and so on and so forth. And and there's a lot of stories and, and witch stories and things of that nature in this general area, you know. So I, I uh, uh, you know, I we, we don't get to do that really <clears throat> a, anymore because now there are so many or- groups that and on any given night you go to explore something and you're. You're, you're bumping elbows with nine other groups, so That's, it's not. Uh, yeah, we had a friend in high school that used to hang out at Penhurst a lot, like on that campus. Penhurst yeah. is, a, but it's now amazing. forget about it. It's it's packed. It's well, obviously it's an attraction too, but it's you can't get into the place. But he just had free reign of it. Well, when he was in high school. Oh, by the way, it's it, there. The, what they do there is great. Their yep. their their haunted stuff is great. They had to take obviously because of COVID and stuff. I'm sure they had to you know, knock that back a bit, but Eastern state, um, you know, if, for, for just the haunted attractions that are the, the, the actual, uh, you know, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, Eris, uh, not Eris, God, I'll make Bates, Bates motel. Yes. Um, which, which is great. Randy Bates, the family, they do a great job. And, and in Jersey, you have Mullica Hills, creamy acres, and you have, um, you know, Jason's woods and all that stuff. There's, we have a lot of top level haunted attractions, in the area and now we're you know we're moving into the zone so mm-hmm. i love it <laughs> well with it's respect fun. to your time steve I, I and you've been generous with it thank you very much i i, I just, just I, I appreciate it i just have one more question yeah. um and joe you may have one as well but okay. i'm gonna ask what genuinely scares you hmm what genuinely what huh. um You know, the thing that really scared me, the it shifted throughout life, uh, but um, the thing that really scared me and motivated me and set my life in a 
in a particular direction was the fear of unemployment. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I had a, a, a seismic shift in my life where I, um, you know, I remember, and I, if I have nightmares, it's about that, you hmm. know, it's about looking for work or being out of work or being, you know, and that's why I always have had, to me, it's always <clears throat> people losing jobs and like uh, during the, the pandemic and all that, you know, other people might have been, oh my God, stay at home, watch Netflix. It's like, no, no, you don't no. understand. Mm-hmm. You don't understand. You have businesses that are, that are, that, are, that you know, corner pizza places or whatever that, that are, they're losing generations of work and, 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 you know, that feeling, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Yeah. You know, and if you take care of somebody and, and, and so that, that was that, you know, for me, I, I mean, I, I love, um, if it's going to be something that's going to be that I really get a visceral fear from on the, on the horror realm, uh, a good demon thing can really can rock my world, but I enjoy it too. So I'm not really. Yeah. You want to be scared of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in a real life scenario, yeah. You know, losing, losing a job or being out of work, you know, and, 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 and every day I, uh, uh, you know, uh, again, I'm, we are blessed beyond blessed and we have listeners who are incredibly loyal. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, they, they're, they pay our salaries. I mean, that they, they in, in this area, when you walk around and we meet people, you, I mean, honestly, you, you want to bear hug everybody and say thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for, for, you know, for for keeping us, for for allowing me to take care of my wife and and have a, a livelihood here and, and have great friends and 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 uh, that's the deal. The fear of losing that that's a fear, you know. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, that was one of the scariest moments uh, in real life. I got was, yep. I got up in the morning, I got in my car, put on you know Y one hundred. <laughs> Listen, like every you know all day and all night i loved that station so much i remember i got in i put it on because th- was there an announcement that it was changing it, formats it, it, it happened it right the- so we we knew it was going to happen okay. that 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 they were going to switch formats our agent was very uh president and i had the same agent and uh so what happened was that we knew it was going to um change formats and both at that time howard had just left ysp right and um and we were doing very well in the in the ratings at y100 and so both ysp and mmr started courting us and um mmr we loved pierre because pierre had always supported us at y100 would come out to events and and you know we knew how legendary mmr was and basically what happened was they came and we said we want to bring everybody the entire yeah. show, yeah. and we want to do it exactly the way we're doing it now, and they just went done. Wow. And that was, that was not that was not the um, you know what the YSP was a great station, uh, some very good people over there uh, at the time. But but uh, I mean, they were so we want this, we want you to feel comfortable with what you're doing, and that's that's what happened. So a lot of people were caught off guard. We knew it was happening, mm. but if we had betrayed that, we could have caused um, you know issues for. Uh, people on the sales staff who yeah, you know yep, who had yeah. to who hadn't told other you know clients and stuff like that and 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 so it was uh, you know yeah I just that was that I, I got in my car I started screaming I'm like what the hell's going on <laughs> I drove over to his house even though it was around the corner I, well I think I went to class and then like met yeah, up at your house I'm like I'm like put on the radio <laughs> like, <laughs> well that was in 2005 we started at MMR and, yeah. and uh, it's crazy. It, we we haven't looked back and uh, you know I mean it's um, they they throw everything you know that they can to support the show and and uh, you know thank God we 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 have that kind of um, kind of deal it works out well you know but you never take it for granted yeah. that's it ties into my fear of unemployment <laughs> <laughs> you never take it for granted you know you you and again anyone you know the 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 audience you know they I, we consider them friends we yeah. consider you know bosses. You know, and you always you 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 know you guys know you you work on the on the product and you try to you try to justify every day having what you have. Yeah, you know, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. That's like the perfect lead for my last question for you, sir. Yes. Which is, you know, because you do, you do a lot with the show and you do a lot for charity. So it's like you know we like our yes. killers on the screen. We do good deeds in person. Right. A lot of that is your love of animals. Now, yes. Is there a particular animal in a horror movie that you consider to be most badass? The most bad, uh, like, like a is, real. 
like I would a go, creature. Yeah, or like creepy. Mine's zombie cat from Pet Cemetery. Zombie cat is is uh, from Pet Cemetery is solid. Um, you know what I enjoyed recently Church, yeah. was the um, was Valentine the um, the uh, Siegfried and Roy Tiger in uh, Army of the of the uh, Dead, the, the Zack Snyder film on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, Zack Snyder's become a friend, um, you know, of the show, and uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh-huh. Uh, the zombie, the, you know, but also if you go back to, we assume that the ring rates in Lord of the Rings are riding. Um, at least kind of effed up horses. Yeah, that's what um, I thought. Though I thought they were zombie yeah, horses. So I like those are pretty cool yeah. too. Uh, I always hate when they take the cheap way out and kill an animal in the movie just to, to for, for emotional impact. I'm like if you kill this mother effing dog, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna freak out. Yeah. It's very rare that I say okay, I get it yeah. because it's such an easy go to. Oh, the cat's dead. Um, you know. Oh wow, you know. To me, I always I almost applaud when it's like, oh, you let it live. Uh, you know, it's it's just yeah. such an easy cop out. But yeah, those are my. And then as far as creatures, you know, H.R. Giger's alien design is great. Um, you know, the, the um, <clears throat> you know, uh, you know what? Any one of the things that appears in John Carpenter's the the thing uh, is is amazing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah. Some good stuff, man. Like, yeah. yeah. But and then, but before we let you go, is there any like charities that we can mention to like our listeners that you would recommend? Well, there's, or? there's my wife has a charity, and and we we do a lot of stuff with it. It's it's Max Fund M A C S F U N D dot com, and what it is, it's a fund for uh, 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 TNR, which is trap new to release. It's basically for you know cats, and and money goes to all you know animals in general, but. Absolutely. The main thrust is if you ever see a lot of times cats will be seeing the at a business and a lot of they, they might bring in somebody to poison the cats mm. or they might you know it, it's a horrible thing that that goes on and and so what happens is with trap new to release you can get these animals give them medical attention if they're able to be brought into homes um you do that um and then you know you you can basically take them off the street and stop them from procreating and 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 uh and and you know get, it's horrible when you see a, like a, a mother cat with kittens under a dumpster, yeah. you know, with no, no source of food or anything. And it turns it around. So it, it is a, um, it, it's part of the deal, but yeah, it's max fun. And we have, we have charity events. Um, we actually, she uh, works with Morris animal refuge, you know, with, for dogs and cats. And, and uh, you know, it's a little, it's, there's so many great charities and so many ones that, that deserve your attention. Mm-hmm. If you're inclined to, support animal ones max fund is one you could look into and i know my, my wife would appreciate it but thanks yeah. for asking yeah, yeah. Well, we can always find a little because that's one of the things we got to give them a thanks to a loyal listener to our show here's the best man in around town is jeff our buddy jeff mitchell uh, jeff mitchell yeah. yeah he does a lot for charity in roxburgh especially with youth soccer so we got to give him oh a it's great it's you. great yeah yeah and you've and that's actually he he kind of gave you the shout out and because you helped him um with, yes with, the mm-hmm. soccer charity. So no, that's that's. I'm really glad you brought yeah. that up. That's so good stuff. Keep the killing and the murder and the violence on the screen. Do good deeds in real life. That's yes. that's, that's good. That's what I mean, we. I'm gonna I'm gonna crochet that and hang it over the fireplace. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I feel I feel like I've done great. a good thing. <laughs> well, Steve Morrison, legend, Hall of Famer. Yes. Possibly we yes. don't know. Yeah, yes. but well, we, we already won. Yes. we already won. So yeah, but. Uh, Thank you guys for taking the time. It was great spending, uh, you know, we, we've we got an hour and 20 some odd minutes. So. Something like that. I don't know. I lost track of time. It's a real pleasure to have you, Steve. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Guys, have a good night. You Take too, it easy. Steve. And remember everybody else out there to keep traveling those channels of fear. <laughs>